honorable minister, conference co-chairs, local and international uh, organizing committee, uh, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. It is my very difficult job now to provide a dedication uh, to Yup Longa. Difficult for two reasons. First, in the short time that I have, it really doesn't allow me to do justice to such a rich and impactful career as Yup's. And also difficult because as a friend, I have yet to accept his death, and it is difficult for me to speak of him in the past tense. On July 17th, 2014, as these newspaper headlines indicate, we were in shock to learn uh, of the uh, loss of uh, the Malaysian Airlines flight. We were further shocked when we learned that this was not an accident, uh, but was actually a deliberate downing of that aircraft uh, over the Ukraine. The, the biggest uh, loss we found uh, was that of Yup Langa when we learned that he was on that flight. At the time he was traveling uh, to the International AIDS Conference in Melbourne, Many of us uh, were also in transit at the time and learned of uh, his death on the way. I know I was uh, transferring flights in Sydney when I learned uh, of Yup and Jacqueline's death, uh, and it is still a very difficult thing for me to remember. Uh, the conference in Melbourne uh, was very subdued as a result. This is a picture uh, of the bridge announcing uh, that conference, uh, which actually became a makeshift memorial uh, to you and to the other delegates uh, who were lost uh, on that flight. I think it is best said uh, by Dennis Waitley uh, in the book Integrity, which I suggest you read. A life lived with integrity even if it lacks the trappings of fame and fortune, is a shining star in whose light others may follow in the years to come. And so despite Yup's loss, I think we need to learn from uh, what he did in his life so that we may carry on that legacy. I would not suggest that anyone in this room try to recapitulate uh, the vast uh, and rich career of Yup but I think that Yup's career provides something for everyone. He was a physician, he was a classically trained virologist, he was a clinical trialist, and I would argue uh, that he was an activist. And he used all of those aspects of his career to argue very strenuously for universal access to care. Let me go through where uh, these different aspects of his career, uh, we may learn uh, different lessons. As a physician, he understood the impact of human disease on the human condition, not just the physical, but also the mental, the social, and the economic. And he never lost sight of the fact that the greatest scientific discoveries in HIV were those that had an impact on patients. He was a classically trained virologist. So for those of you in the room uh, who are basic scientists, you can apply what he did to your own careers. He was trained uh, as a PhD ca candidate with another friend of mine, Jaap Houtschmidt. Uh, he did many early studies of P24 antigen and plasma and CSF. He did biological markers of disease progression. He actually did some very basic studies uh, of T cell receptors and cellular immune responses dysregulation of antibodies and B cell responses in HIV infection, immune responses to regulatory proteins and HIV virulence and disease progression. He was also a great clinical trialist and he was involved in many of the early pivotal trials of antiretroviral therapy that shaped our understanding of how to administer antiretrovirals, the, the Cesar, the Petra, the Incus trials, and I'll go into those in, in some detail. Uh, as a result of that, he was the chief of clinical research and drug development at the Global Program on AIDS for the WHO from 1992 to 1995, and he was on the external advisory committee of the uh, US HVTN. He was one of uh, the first uh, and many who understood the importance of this finding, which is that monotherapy did not lead to uh, sustained suppression. 
Dual therapy did a little better, but wasn't uh, good enough. And triple therapy uh, was what was required to really maintain viral suppression. Uh, back in the very early days when we only had AZT and then we had nevirapine, he was involved in this study, where alternating those two drugs uh, was shown to not work. Uh, you could give nevirapine once, it was suppressive. After that, nevirapine had no effect, and AZT became less and less effective over time. So two drugs alternating wasn't good. In the, in the Cesar uh, trial, uh, he showed that uh, adding a single drug, 3TC, was helpful, but the conclusion of this study was that while it was better than not adding drug, it still was not going to be good enough. And then finally, one of the, the first uh, studies of triple drug therapy, the Incus uh, study, he sh finally showed uh, that uh, triple drugs uh, was the way to lead to good viral suppression. He was also involved uh, in studies of uh, blocking maternal to, to child transmission, uh, looking at AZT and 3TC, uh, and showing that uh, this uh, led uh, to even better uh, blocking of uh, maternal to child transmission. And I would suggest that, that this is really uh, the, the start uh, of treatment as prevention, something that uh, he came to stand for very strongly. He also understood the importance of international collaborations. He was uh, uh, one of the organizers and, and uh, founders uh, of HIVNAT, uh, which stands for HIV, Netherlands, Australia, Thailand. Uh, this shows uh, that group uh, very early in its inception. This international collaboration has been very strong, has done many uh, treatment uh, and epidemiologic uh, and natural history studies, and is still strong today. And most importantly, I would call uh, Yoop in, in, uh, towards the end of his career an activist. He saw the benefits of antiretroviral therapy in the developed world, and he would not accept that these same benefits should be with withheld from the developing world. He fought tirelessly against what I would consider ignorant and arrogant arguments on why antiretrovirals could not be made available to everyone in need. He was not afraid to challenge groupthink, and I would argue uh, that you should not uh, be afraid to challenge groupthink. He was also able to speak truth to power, and when I say truth to power, he used scientific evidence uh, to, to uh, go against uh, those who would tell him that we couldn't do this. He used his platform as president of the IAS from 2002 to 2004 as a platform to, to move his agenda forward. He was the chairman of Farm Access Foundation. He founded the Amsterdam Institute for Global Health and Development. And he was scientific advisor to the board of the Health Insurance Fund Foundation, uh, which was set up uh, to uh, make sure that there was sustained funding of insurance uh, in the developing world. He had many quotes uh, which uh, we all know and love and still use today. This is one of my favorites. Uh, if we can bring a bottle of Coke to every corner of Africa, we should be able to also deliver antiretroviral drugs. So obviously there were logistic hurdles uh, to rolling out antiretroviral drugs, but there were logistic hurdles to getting Coke everywhere. And because there was an economic uh, incentive it was done, and the same thing uh, should be uh, and has been true now for antiretrovirals. I would, this is one of my favorite uh, uh, commentaries that uh, he helped co-author. Uh, it was from The Lancet in 2006. I would uh, encourage everyone to go back and read this. Uh, it was entitled, Heart for the HIV-Infected Employees of Large Companies in Africa. I simply quote one line. Uh, in 2001, Heineken decided to add heart to the package of medical benefits for employees. Heineken was asked what justified the decision to offer treatment to their employees. But on those occasions, the question was reversed, and other companies asked why they did not offer heart to employees. Various reasons were given, and in this article, they point out why such justifications are not valid. And I won't go through all of them, but I simply list what I consider the arrogant arguments uh, that were 
provided as to why uh, they couldn't provide uh, antiretrovirals, including African patients are not adherent, it's too costly, it's not sustainable, it'll just lead to resistance, et cetera. Obviously, all of you in this room now know that he was right uh, and uh, that antiretrovirals are indeed uh, the legacy uh, of Uplanga uh, and uh, AIDS treatment uh, in Africa. Another favorite qu quote uh, was, uh, of all the ills that kill the poor, none is as lethal as bad government. This was from a, a, uh, uh, an article in The Economist uh, uh, in August uh, 14th of 1999. So what is Youp's vision? Uh, I don't uh, perceive uh, to, to know his vision, but I think uh, he certainly wanted uh, uh, access uh, to many, if not all, in need uh, throughout the world. As you can see, uh, the projected trend uh, is in the right direction. Uh, that we are getting more and more access to care. The reality, however, has always been difficult. And as you heard uh, in, in the, the last talk, uh, there has been a flattening of funding since about 2008, 2009. Uh, these are dollars uh, from the Global Fund for HIV, TB, and Malaria. And you can see that after 2008, that has been pretty flat. So this is uh, a, a difficult uh, situation. As I said, I can't speak for you. Uh, David Cooper, another very good friend of his, uh, summarized it in this way, and I take this uh, from, from my friend David Cooper, that HIV AIDS seriously hampers economic development of many developing nations, particularly in Sub-Saharan Africa. And it is hard to imagine robust ec economic growth where so many adults are dying in their productive prime, leaving the very young and the very old to cope alone. Once again, from the article in The Economist. The wide-scale introduction of adequate antiretroviral therapy in developing country requires a concerted global effort of a broad coalition of public sector, private sector, civil society, and academia with divisions of tasks and accountability. Antiretroviral scale-up will only succeed and prevail if the issue of sustainable financing of health care for everyone has been solved, something that Youp fought tirelessly for. So what should be Youp's legacy? Well, the solution, I think, is that we have tantalizing preliminary indications that we may be able to reduce incidence by an effective rollout of antiretroviral therapy. We have no vaccine or cure right now, so antiretroviral therapy is our major intervention which could reduce incidence. It would be a tragedy if we could not try to get enough people on treatment to reduce incidence. We need to per, uh, per, persuade civil society that flatlining of funds is just plain unacceptable, and we must finish the job. Youp's other legacy are the people that he trained. So while Youp may be gone, uh, this is uh, a stack uh, of uh, uh, theses, uh, uh, theses that, that uh, many uh, friends of you would get. Uh, I, I can't remember a month or two going by that I didn't get one of these in the mail. These uh, are really, uh, in addition uh, to Youp's uh, biological uh, uh, children, Max uh, being here today, these are Youp's other children, and they will carry on his legacy. And finally, uh, I remember many years ago when Charles Boucher and, and Youp Langa came to me, and I don't even remember what meeting we were at, and suggested that we needed to hold a meeting in Africa uh, of African-based research. Uh, and that became uh, the interest workshop. And I think that I'm very pleased that Catherine Hankins has, has agreed uh, to help carry on the legacy of the interest workshop, because I think this is an excellent meeting and should continue uh, in his name. And finally, um, Jacqueline von Tongeren uh, was uh, his right hand, uh, his, uh, his uh, love, his, his uh, reason for being towards the end of his life. Youp was a great person, but I have to admit, he was not very organized. And, and Jacqueline, 
provided uh, that for him. Jacqueline uh, was extremely organized, and the two of them were able to do things together uh, that neither one could have accomplished alone. This is how I would like to remember you, smiling with friends uh, and looking, I think, forward and into the future. I'd like to thank Catherine, uh, Sharon Lewin, David Cooper, and Michael Letterman for, for sharing their thoughts and slides. Uh, and I want to thank you. And please let us all dedicate uh, our future lives uh, to that uh, which you began. Thank you very much.